Hey guys, and welcome to another episode. Today in this video, I'm gonna show you how to install an accessory belt on your vehicle. Now, every single car has one of these. Now, the installation regarding this is gonna be slightly different from car to car. However, it's more or less the exact same thing. So what we're gonna be doing is taking out the old one and installing this new one on my car. Now, it's been about 50,000 kilometers since I've taken the old one out and replaced it with a new one, and that's what I'm gonna be doing today. So, what is the accessory belt? Well, the accessory belt, is this right here and it's connected from the crankshaft it goes around a bunch of pulleys comes up here and it just ensures that your power steering your alternator your water pump and everything else is going to run without it the only thing that would work is power supplied to the motor you wouldn't have any coolant pressure you won't have your power steering working you won't have the alternator you won't have that supplying power to your battery um and what else and you also won't have your air conditioner to work so that's what's down there. Today in this video, I'm gonna show you how to remove, inspect, and then to reinstall a new belt on your car. So on a front wheel drive vehicle, you're gonna most likely find your drive belt found on the left or right side of your engine. Now if you're working on a rear wheel drive vehicle or even four wheel drive, you'll most likely find it found at the front. So it's whatever end, the crankshaft is not connected to the transmission. So if this is our motor right here, found right there, we've got our transmission starting here over, which means that the accessory belt is gonna be found on this side, right here. So I went ahead and drew up a little diagram just to show you guys what it looks like for my vehicle. So this right here is the orientation of my drive belt for my car. So it starts off here at number one, and that is the crankshaft. It moves out to number two, which is the AC compressor. Move up to number three, that is our water pump. If we go to number four, which is that one right there, that is our alternator. We go up to the top, that is our power steering, which is right here, that's the power steering. And then from there, the belt is gonna wrap around it, go down, and that is our tensioner. Now this is an auto tensioner on my vehicle. Now not every car is going to have one. If you don't have a tensioner like this on your car, maybe it's a manual tensioner, you're gonna have to manually adjust the tensioner on there so that there's no slack on the actual belt. Now, if your car is, say, slipping here, it could be just a matter of replacing the tensioner or tightening up your tensioner that you have on your car. Now, another way that I've seen these timing belts work is that you might have a bolt found on the alternator that when you loosen it or screw it in, it's gonna add or remove tension to the entire system. So think of it like this. If you don't have, say, the tensioner right there and the tensioner is built in to your alternator, what's gonna happen is you're gonna have a bolt that's either gonna push in or pull out depending on how you turn it and that is what's gonna give you pressure on your belt. That's what's gonna be creating the tension on here and it's gonna allow this belt to not slip. So to replace the accessory belt, we're gonna need a set of tools like this. Now this is a gear wrench serpentine belt removal kit. Serpentine belt tool and this is what I'm gonna be using today to change out my serpentine belt. So right here it's gonna show you any part that you have, any part that you need, along with instructions on how to use it. Now I'm showing you guys today how to use it and it's very simple. So what you're first gonna do is you're gonna grab this right here and this is the 14 inch comfort grip extension arm. You're gonna attach this end to the solid side right here of the ratcheting wrench. So we're gonna have it like this. That's gonna go in there like that. Like so. And then on this end, you're gonna attach whatever size socket you need to take out or loosen up the tensioner. So for my vehicle, I need this one right here and that's a 14 millimeter. So the way this works is, if I can get it out, it's a little socket like that and then it attaches inside the ratchet. So it goes in there like that. Now this way would be loose and if I put it on the other side, it'd be tightening. So because we need to loosen up the tensioning arm, I'm gonna put it in like that, grab the entire arm, and stick this on the side of the tensioner. So if we take a look at this picture, we can see that if we go down from the power steering pump, we'll find our tensioner. So if we take a look at the car, we've got this right here, that's our power steering pump. If we follow it from the back side, we're gonna see that that little pulley down there, that is our automatic tensioner. And if you can see, there's a little bolt on the side of it. So that bolt is a 14 mil bolt and we're using our arm right here with a 14 mil socket on the end of it, we're gonna slide that in there and attach that over top of the bolt. 
Okay, so like that. And then once you ratchet it, ready, here we go, I'm gonna apply some pressure to it. It's very loose and right now you can just slide off the belt and replace it with the new one. All you really need to do is grab the pulley, take tension off of the tensioner, slide it over one of the pulleys, and as soon as you do that, you should have enough space to just let off of the automatic tensioner, let off of it, slide the belt out, and you should be able to tackle the rest of it very easily. So there's that out, tensioner off completely, and you can take the tool out. So with that aside, we can go ahead and remove the entire belt that's going over top of each of the pulleys. So it goes over the crank, it goes underneath, connects to the air conditioning compressor, goes up to the coolant pump, or the water pump, whatever you wanna call it, to the um, alternator, and then finally up here to the power steering pump. Now this might be a little bit easier if you go from underneath the car, say you need to get access to a certain spot, but otherwise you should be able to do everything from up here. And there you go. So this is the old belt. I'm gonna show you why we're replacing this one. Alrighty, so right here is the belt. This is the old one. And if you can tell, on the one side it's ribbed, and on the other side it's smooth. But, by the design of the accessory belt, pulleys rub on both this side, right here, and they also run along this side. Now this side is where they usually run on, and this side is actually where you're gonna be getting most of the wear. However, it does also wear on this side as well. And because of that, both ends are gonna get worn down, they're both gonna deteriorate, and over time, you're gonna have to replace them. Now I'm gonna see if I can show you up close. See these little rubber threads? Well, each one of these things over time, because it's all rubber, it's gonna deteriorate and start to crack. Now when they crack too much, and this entire piece wears down too much, what's gonna happen is you're gonna get a tear, and then all of a sudden, you're not gonna have any power steering, you're not gonna have any coolant, you're not gonna have any air conditioning, and it's all gonna be replaced, and you could potentially be stuck on the side of the road. So what I like doing is replacing this stuff before it actually gets to that point. Hence why this is preventative maintenance. The preventative maintenance, if you ask me, is the most important kind of maintenance because it doesn't make you stuck on the side of the road. You're preventing yourself from getting in an urgent position, where you're out of a car. So this is the old one, and this is the brand new one. So you can see, it's all nice. You can see there's writing actually on here. Now all of this is worn down, and I'll zoom in and show you guys. This is what a new one looks like. There's that side, here's the other. See how it's all nice and brand new? Looks good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this entire thing, and I'm gonna reinstall this back on the car. Now, make sure that you take note of the orientation. Now, if you ask me, I find it easier to start from the bottom side of the car, so work with uh, the crank pulley, then move aside to the compressor for the air conditioning, and then work your way up to the top where you can wrap this around the power steering pump, and then finally, the tensioner. Now before we go ahead and put our belt back on the car, now is a perfect time to inspect each one of the components that are up here. So each one of these pulleys should spin fairly easily if everything is working nicely. So this is the power steering pump, and if I spin this, see how it doesn't grind, you don't hear any noises? The same thing goes for the alternator. That spins nicely, and then you can do that to every one of the pulleys. If anything feels weird, if it makes a noise when it's turning, what you're gonna have to do is replace whatever component is broken. Now, whenever you're ready, go ahead and grab your belt, and go ahead and reinstall this back on the car. Now let's say for whatever reason, you can't grab the new accessory belt and install it on the bottom side of the engine. Well, what do you do? Well, what I'm doing is I'm moving to the front wheel well, and if you can see right here, I've got a lot of room to bring the belt down, slide the new belt over top of the crankshaft, and maybe work my way to the front, and it's gonna be a lot easier doing it this way. If you go to the wheel well, you're gonna have a lot more room to work with should you need to get to the bottom. So as you can see from here, there's the crank, there's your compressor for the air conditioning, that's your coolant pump, and you can bring the entire accessory belt down and get access to all this stuff much easier from down here. Now another quick trick that I have for you is you can use a metal hanger. If you undo this, 
but you're essentially undoing the top. And then once you have that done, you're gonna have, okay, holy crap, this is the hardest damn hanger I've ever seen. So once you have this undone, you're gonna have a little hook that you can play with, hook it down, fish that into the engine bay. Say you need to pick up the accessory belt, you can slide it over top of this and pull it up to give yourself a little bit more room. Now if your hands can't fit down in there, this is a quick, easy trick to help you out if you get stuck. So if everything went in easily and everything is installed properly, when we go inside the car and turn the car on, we should have our air conditioning working, our power steering, our coolant pump should be pumping coolant through the engine, and everything should operate normally. Now if your vehicle had a squeaky belt, once we install this new one on, we shouldn't have any noise coming from this. Now if you still have a noise, make sure that the auto tensioner is working properly. And if you don't have an auto tensioner, make sure your regular tensioner, the one that has to be manually adjusted, is on properly. Otherwise, it's guaranteed something else inside of there. So it's one of the components, whether it be the alternator, the power steering pump, the coolant pump, or the air conditioning compressor. It's gonna be one of those issues, if it's not, I don't know what to tell you, scrap the car. <laughs> but in all seriousness, let's turn the car on and give this a shot. Now the old belt that I had on the car that I just replaced has been on my car for two and a half years and almost 60,000 kilometers. Now it probably could have lasted a little bit longer, but considering how inexpensive these things are, I'd be stupid not to replace it at this point. So it's up to you guys. Once it starts cracking, I would definitely, definitely replace it. But I mean, even still, you should be replacing them, you know, every 50,000 kilometers or every 30,000 miles. As soon as they start to go, that's an I would replace them. If you guys have any questions regarding the video, throw it down in the comment section below. If you guys wanna pick up any of the things that I use today from the tool or the belt, you guys can check the description box. I'll have links for you there. Otherwise, guys, thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.